Well, I think what, what, what Nordhaus did was that he became very interested in other sciences after his PhD degree, maybe even before, I don't know, but um, uh, he did the dis interdisciplinary thing, which is very fashionable today, but I think in the 1970s. Uh, it wasn't very common that an economist would dig deep into natural sciences and uh, also discover climate change as a potentially big problem. I mean, most people, for sure most economists didn't think about it, and many others didn't either. So, so I guess he had the early realization that you needed to connect all these things and um, build a framework for thinking about them together. So I think a lot of what he did was to simplify the natural science bits to the point where he could think about them jointly with economics. So there is sort of, like you, you need to take existing knowledge, um, make it uh, digestible, uh, digestible for, for people like himself and for other economists and ultimately for policymakers. So that, that was a, quite an effort. And uh, in, the, in the early days, he, he, he asked limited questions, but still super interesting questions like what's the best way of not exceeding two degrees of warming? A question that most people are super interested in today. He asked like 40 years ago. Um, but then he asked more ambitious questions, which is, okay, but what is the best thing to do overall? Let's not restrict attention just to a particular temperature goal. How should we think about maybe what's the right temperature goal and, and so on? So he, he needed to invest for decades before he was ready to address these more difficult questions. And as I said in my presentation today in the press conference, it's, we don't have final answers, but now we, kind of, we can just follow in his footsteps and if we don't like exactly what he did on this, we change it. And, and that's what everybody's uh, doing now around the world. Yeah, and the, the most last report from this night, IPCC, previous night, yeah. IPCC says that we have to stop the growth of temperature to at 1.5 degrees. Yeah, I, I haven't, um, I haven't uh, had time to read it uh, because it just it came out at midnight, uh, so not too many hours ago. So I'll, I'll, I'll have to look carefully and see what it says. But, but there is 1.5 degrees as a ultimate yes, limit. The idea so. there was to say, what would it take to get us to not exceed one and a half? Uh, so, so it's, I don't think that the, the point was we mustn't exceed one and a half. It was more, what would it take? Is it even possible? And I think they, that's my reading without having studied it carefully. And the question is, they say it's possible, it's very, very hard. Uh, and it takes things like um, special efforts to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So it's the technological um, and it's part. kind of relying on future technology to to do the job, and, and again, that that's that's the kind of uh, thing that Romer was interested in. So the the two uh, areas are connected that way. What, what would be the William Nordhaus answer to this ambition to limit the growth of temperature? I am not sure because I just know that he has said that without advanced new type of geoengineering or advanced types of removing carbon dioxide. He, I don't think he thinks it's possible, uh, but that doesn't mean that he thinks we shouldn't try. I, th I think he says it's extremely difficult and you have to rely on future technologies for doing these things uh, to work out and succeed. I think what he would say, if I may guess, is that you should also figure out how much it costs to do that. It's not just a matter of doing it at any cost. So there is still a cost-benefit calculation there. Um, I think he would answer, but you would have to ask him for the details. I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what are the policy recommendations uh, to somehow curb the emissions? Yeah, I think he's, he's uh, for a long time been pushing the idea of just using uh, global carbon tax. I mean, try to agree that all countries, or all large uh, regions of countries should tax carbon. And uh, as an economist, this is kind of an obvious solution. Um, I think it's gaining momentum, the notion of using carbon taxes. I think the, the idea is a little bit that um, if you have a sizable carbon tax, uh, it will do several things, but one of them is to eliminate a lot of fossil fuel that's not really so productive anyway, or it's, it's 
marginally profitable and then it will not be used if it, there's a tax on top of that and that that's a good thing but it might also induce more new technologies that can replace the fossil fuel that will be outcompeted so I'm guessing that this is what he would say but I, I want to emphasize that the price is not given for any particular policy conclusions this is more it's more methodological price so it's really kind of the tools we need to answer the kind of questions you are asking me now, not, not to kind of say what to do, and that's it. Um, so in part I'm just speculating, and we'll see what he has to say when it comes to Stockholm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Per Crusoe. Sure.